Welcome to ELEC week 37, part 2. We are still looking at operational amplifiers. And now we are going to look at some analyzing tools. We have some rules, 1, 2 and 3, we are going to look at. That helps us analyzing op amp circuit. And then we are going to look at negative feedback, what is that? And we have two types, voltage feedback and operational feedback. And then we have another rule, rule 4. These are the most important part of analyzing tools to op amp circuits. So get started by rule 1, 2 and 3. Rule 1 simply states that in the ideal op amp, the open loop gain of the op amp is infinite. And for the real op amp, we have more realistic values of 10 to 4 to 10 to 6 times. Then rule 2 state that the ideal op amp are in is infinite and are out is zero ohm. The real op amp has more modest values of 10 to 6, 10 to 12 ohm. That's very big values, but still not ideal. Infinite. And then uh, out is a range of 10 ohm to about 1 kilo ohm. Rule 3 is about the currents to the up end. And here, in the real, ideal case, we have that the non-inverting and the inverting, oh sorry, inverting is zero amps, and for the real, up amp. We have that the currents for the non-inverting and the inverting are in the range of nanoampere to picoampere. So that's small but still not zero. That was the three rules. Let's look at the negative feedback. When we use uh, up amps, we apply negative feedback in order to get an amplifier. If we apply positive feedback, the up amp has a tendency to saturate, uh, meaning that if we connect some feedback to the non-inverting input, the output will either saturate to the positive supply pin or the negative supply pin. So it's not really an amplifier anymore. But if we connect some circuitry between 
the output and the inverting input pin and this is some circuitry can both be a resistor a capacitor or a combination of capacitors and resistors or inductors with a resistor so any circuitry can also be a sensor of a kind if we apply some feedback here uh, via the circuitry we have negative feedback and we have two types of negative feedback we had voltage feedback and we have operational feedback a new pen yeah. when we have voltage feedback the input signal to the amplifier is connected to the non-inverting input pin so the signal we like to amplify V in here is connected to the non-inverting input and then there is connected something here from the inverting input pin to the out. When we have operational feedback We have the input signal in connected to the inverting input pin, and then we have some circuitry connected to V out. So we can see the difference between these operational feedback or voltage feedback is that V in is connected to another pin. So for voltage feedback it's connected to the non-inverting input and for the operational feedback it's connected to the inverting input pin. And wh why is that so important? Well, when we have to analyze circuits, the trick is to analyze first what type we have, because if we know we have voltage feedback, we can solve an equation for uh, the gain, the voltage gain, V out over V in, by help of voltages. So we simply analyze the circuits by help of voltages. Um, to find the output gain here, the voltage gain, V out over V in, then we analyze by help of currents. So we will see that in the next video how we actually apply that on two circuits. But first we have to look a bit on room 4. apply that on ideal op amps. Because all our circuit analyzers start out by 
looking at the idea case first and then we'll add the errors later. So, rule 4 assumes that the raw gain of the album, the open loop gain, is infinite. That's the important trick. And then we know that the op n will supply an output when it has negative feedback. So we need negative feedback. In this case, that the non-inverting input minus the inverting input. This still counts also for the open loop gain of the op amp, but also for the case of negative feedback. But rule 4 only counts when we have negative feedback. Rule 1, 2 and 3 counts also when we have non-feedback, as a no connections. Well, in the case when we assume that the raw gain is infinite, we can move this here over, so we have V out over V0, um, the raw gain. Then we get plus and minus on this side. We know that this one is infinite, so having a sum value divided by infinite means that this fraction here becomes very small. So it actually becomes zero. And that's interesting that these here becomes zero when a zero is infinite. So when the raw gain of the RPM is infinite and we have negative feedback, this one here becomes zero, the difference. And if we look at the circuit, if we feed something Back here, be out. We have some circuit feeding back here. So this rule four states that as long as we have negative feedback and there is enough raw gain in the RPM, V plus and V minus the difference between them will become zero. So the potential of this point will equal the potential at this point. So the up amp will feed back as much voltage as current that it needs in order for this to happen. And this is also called the summing point constraint or the virtual ground. But it's virtual, it's no ground as such, there is no current return to this point. It's as it looks like that these points are connected for somehow but it's connected via that the op amp simply will drive currents or voltages around here that this node become the same gets the same potential as the non-inverting so that's the trick of negative feedback when we have enough raw gain and that's rule 4 the essence of rule 4 that this point here looks like the potential is zero. Yeah, let's look at what we just talked about. We were talking about analyzing tools to up amp circuits. 
We had three rules we looked at. They count for any circuit. Uh, also for the case with no feedback. Then we looked at negative feedback. We had two times voltage feedback and operational feedback. Voltage feedback was um, the case where we had the input voltage on the non-inverting pin and we had some circuitry from V out to the inverting pin. And then we had operational feedback that is when the input voltage is connected to the non-inverting pin, sorry, the inverting pin and we had some circuitry going from V out to the inverting pin. And then we had looked at rule 4, that's where we assume that we have negative feedback and that the raw gain of the up amp is infinite. And in that case, we can see that we get something called a virtual ground, that the potential on the voltage potential on the non-inverting pin actually equals the potential on the inverting pin. So these are the analyzing tools and we will see in the next part how we actually apply these.